Hey guys, Kenai Kino here. I've been trying to get back in the groove of making videos more frequently, especially the Kaiju Binge vlogs, but there was one other thing I wanted to make before the end of the month, a retrospective on a great little series I started watching about a year ago. Last February, I posted a video giving a little channel update on the occasion of having reached 100 subscribers. In that video, I included an aside about having just begun watching Tokusatsu Gaga Ga, an hour-long comedic drama series that at the time had just begun being fansubbed as a joint project between Big Nova and Love Gen. That fansub project would end up hitting some snags before they finally finished subbing all seven episodes, and I remember checking Big Nova's blog almost daily to see if they'd posted anything new. Now, with the series long since completed and a little over a year having passed since I began watching it, I just wanted to take a look back and reflect on what I found so special about it. Tokusatsu Ga 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 is a drama series based on a manga by Niwa Tanba, which follows an office worker named Kano Nakamura as she balances her adult social life with her continuing interest in tokusatsu superheroes shows aimed at children. The show starts off fairly light-hearted, dealing mostly with humorous situations in which she tries to hide her interest in tokusatsu from her co-workers, despite it accounting for almost all of her free time. For instance, she doesn't really know any popular songs when she joins her colleagues after work for karaoke, but successfully passes off the opening theme to Rescue Machine Emmer Jason, a show from her childhood, as a nostalgic throwback pick with the others remembering the show as well and enthusiastically joining in. As the show progresses, she meets an older woman named Yoshida, and they bond over their enjoyment of Jushouwan, the current installment of the series Sentai equivalent, and attend live shows together at a local mall. There's also a kid she nicknames Damien, who's inspired by Jushouwan to face the pressures of the cram school his parents send him to, and a shopkeeper she calls Mr. Yakuza for his tough, threatening appearance, who turns out to be into a girl's anime called Love Cute. She also becomes better acquainted with a quiet and somewhat severe co-worker named Kitashiro, who is outwardly judgmental of Nakamura's hobby, but turns out to still be nursing wounds from when a younger, more earnest friend named Miyabi outed her to her co-workers as a fellow fan of a local idol group from Nagoya called B-Boys. Toward the end, the underlying tension Nakamura feels, the shame over her enjoyment of tokusatsu instilled by her overbearing mother, comes to a head as her mother arrives from the country for a surprise visit. There's a lot to like about this show. For one thing, as a tokusatsu fan myself, there are the scenes from the in-universe tokusatsu shows. Obviously, this series didn't have the budget of a heavily merchandised franchise like Super Sentai, but the hero designs featured in it are still appealing, if relatively relatively simple, and even as the show's limitations show themselves in other costumes, props, and so on, a considerable effort is clearly put into the scenes they appear in, down to shooting the tokusatsu material at 24 frames per second, as opposed to the 30 used for the real-life drama scenes. The show also just demonstrates a kind of respect and reverence for the genre, incorporating all kinds of aspects of tokusatsu series, their merchandising, and their year-long life cycle, that'll be instantly recognizable to fans, as well as understanding the appeal of tokusatsu to adults as compelling and colorful drama that explicitly affirms values of trust, courage, and generosity without the cynicism and pessimism often found in more adult-oriented media. There's also just a strong visual style to the show in general. Various on-screen text complements jokes like Nakamura posing as a bored girl on the go at the live hero show, or her desperation to go home as she and her colleagues work late to correct a mistake in some printed materials. Other scenes are enhanced with visual metaphors and cutaways, and even an aside with Nakamura imagining how a conversation might go works in some creative lighting and set design. What really won me over early on though was the relatability of Nakamura's anxiety. I can't really comment on the professional culture in Japan of course, but I started working in an office a few months before Tokusatsu Gaga Ga started airing, and even in a culture where niche or geek media is becoming more popular and acceptable as an interest, it's still an environment that thrives on small talk as a mechanism for team bonding, but seems just conformist enough that expressing an interest in something really obscure 
especially something that could be considered sort of immature, is an intimidating idea. Nakamura's predicament is the first of many things that I think make the series a brilliant encapsulation of even a good deal of Western millennial angst. Aside from her professional tribulations, Nakamura has to deal with the increased difficulty of maintaining a social life as one grows up, as schedules, relationships, and career paths gradually pull her, Yoshida, Kitashiro, and Miyabi in different directions that make getting together more difficult. During the beach episode, Nakamura also muses about the way her mother's rejection of her interest in tokusatsu tied into her attempts to enforce traditional gender roles. The latter point also figures into perhaps the most poignant aspect of the show. After much of the sixth episode is devoted to Nakamura's humorously framed efforts to prevent her mother from seeing her memorabilia-filled apartment, the whole affair takes a deadly serious turn as her mother reveals that she already visited the apartment while Nakamura was out out, proceeding to harshly judge Nakamura and her friends, slapping her, and stressing that these preoccupations will prevent her from finding a husband before she turns 30, after which point no one will want her. As her diatribe reaches a peak, she breaks the figure of Nakamura's favorite Jushowan character, and Nakamura snaps, slapping her mother back and vowing to repay everything she spent raising her, at which point they will no longer be family. The seventh and final episode has Nakamura talking to her brother and reflecting on her relationship with her mother, recalling how her parents' divorce left her mother a single woman in her 30s, her inability to remarry, in hindsight now clearly informing her concerns for her daughter. Nakamura realizes that her attempts to escape her smothering upbringing likely felt like yet another rejection to her mother as well. Her brother also finds the VHS of the Emmer Jason finale that originally rekindled her repressed childhood interest in tokusatsu during her senior year of high school, with the theme of the power of enduring love for something striking a chord and providing her with the confidence to reconcile with her mother while carrying on with her hobby even if she is still a bit self-conscious about it. This ending, with a degree of distance granting perspective on a difficult relationship with a family member, really resonated with me and the generational issues involved with regard to gender, relationships, independence in young adulthood, and difficulty communicating with loved ones are things I see people I know struggle with all the time. They're all treated with surprising sincerity, nuance, and compassion in a show that starts off being about a nerd trying not to seem like a nerd at work. Tokusatsu Gagaga Ga Ga is a really wonderful series. After watching the finale, I found myself wishing for a a second season. There's almost certainly adequate source material in the 18 volume and counting manga series, but even if that never comes to pass, I am so glad this show was made, and I can't recommend it enough to anyone with even a passing interest in tokusatsu media, or even just anyone who's ever felt like the odd one out thanks to an interest in something they feared others wouldn't understand. Thank you so much for watching. I know this video doesn't dive as deep as some of my others, but I just felt I should post some kind of appreciation of this show now that it's concluded, and the anniversary seemed like as good an occasion as any. As always, special thanks to my patrons, especially Exploder Button, John Pinier, and Ryan Clark. My Patreon and social media are all in the description, check them out, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> I'm not